Just off the courthouse square in downtown Bloomington looms a turreted mansion carved in imposing Indiana limestone. Today, it is home to one of the state's oldest antique shops, the Garrett, known for its rare and often unusual collection, fitting for this eclectic home with a storied past. The mansion was commissioned in the late 1890s by one of the pioneer citizens of Bloomington, John Waldron Sr. Waldron came to Bloomington in 1856 after purchasing a tannery and investing the profits into real estate. By the turn of the century, Waldron owned much of the property on the courthouse square, including several magnificent mansions along Kirkwood Avenue. This particular residence, however, was designed as a wedding gift for the union of Waldron's daughter Mary to the esteemed Bloomington attorney Ira C. Batman, forever bestowing the title The Batman House on the residence. The eccentric design was crafted by one of Bloomington's first professional architects, John L. Nichols, shortly after he set up his business in August of 1895. Nichols went on to achieve great success, designing many of the most prominent downtown Bloomington structures. But the Batman residence remained one of his most renowned works. In 1929, the residence was sold to proprietor E.T. Ware, and his wife, Grace, and the family took a full ad in the local Bloomington newspaper to announce the mansion's new mission, not as a residence, but as the Ware Funeral Home. For reasons unknown, the venture was short-lived. By the early 1930s, the property was purchased by the Laborers' International Union, and for the next 40 years, the Batman House functioned as its headquarters. Until 1974, when a chance sighting by the Garrett family led to an eclectic match made in heaven. We had been in business since 1964. Started our first antique shop on North Walnut Street. And one day we saw a sign in the window. It wasn't even in the hands of a realtor, just a for sale sign in the front window. <laughs> for sale. And we said, oh, we gotta, we gotta buy that house. <laughs> so we did. For a limestone, house, it's one of the most interesting ones, I think, in town with the towers and so forth. Everybody comments on them. We bought it then in 74 and we worked on it for a long time inside and out because the roof was leaking. We had to have a new roof put on, took care of the plaster and painted every room in the house. <laughs> so it was two years before we actually opened our shop here. In addition to the fine china and extravagant furniture, the shop features an extensive collection of rocks and minerals, a lifelong passion of Mr. Garrett that started as a child. He told me a story one time about a cousin of his giving him a, a geode that was all rough and about the size of an egg, and he told him it was a, snake's, a snake egg. <laughs> and that fascinated him so, I mean, it was just a geode. And that fascinated him so that he started collecting rocks. I mean, I was never interested in that sort of thing until I met him. But you know, it rubs off on you. <laughs> and you go to shows and you see things from all over the world. I think he just liked to find things that were unusual that he hadn't seen before, you know. And that love of the strange extended to his own private collection of oddities not for sale to the mansion visitors, but widely known for such items as monkey skeletons, mummies, and even an octopus preserved in a jar. Talk about strange, yeah. We did have a blowfish, uh, and we had a, a taxidermied cobra and mongoose. He liked to have something that nobody else had, I guess. <laughs> or that you wouldn't see anyplace else. And I have had customers come in and say, you have the most interesting things and your place is more like a museum than it is a shop. In 2006, Dennis passed away, but Nancy still strives to keep his spirit alive in the shop today. It's, it's fun to find all the interesting pieces, old pieces, really old pieces that were, you don't even see them in the antique shops these days. But some of the craftsmanship of the older wood, wood, wooden pieces, and even the glass in China, some of it is just, you just do not see it anymore. And um, then for me, too, one of the pleasures 
We, we, we specialize in replacement parts for lighting. We have a lot of lights and we have chimneys and shades and so forth. People have an heirloom maybe that's been handed down in the family and then they, something gets broke on it and they ha can't use it or it needs rewiring or something if it's an electric lamp even. And if they bring it to us what they need or they can tell us what they need, then I can sell them the parts to make it whole again. It makes me feel good because it makes them feel good that now that something that was passed down to them is usable again. <laughs> so it makes me feel great. <laughs> Just as the Garretts assured that the Batman house was made usable again and will pass on for generations to come.